Alrighty folks, I am so excited! Welcome back to Adobe Live! My name is Voodoo Val, I'm going to be your host this morning for the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge. It is a beautiful sunny Monday morning for me here in Northern California. Um, I would love to welcome all of the familiar faces and new faces that I see in the chat. Good morning Annika and RB, Steven, Clarissa, Steve Festus Casaboom. I, I saw General Kenobi in there as well. Where are you? my friend where are you uh frank jennifer marcia hello there <laughs> hello there kenobi z welcome in um i believe i saw the one and only sam peterson robert uh, it's good to see all of you folks. Thank you so much for joining me. Um, if you are over on the YouTube channel, please come over to behance.net slash live because that is where I am reading the chat. That is where all of the helpful resources and links are going to be posted into the chat for all of you folks. And it is also a great place to make friends. So please head over there. Um, I'm going to jump into this real quick to kind of give you folks a little bit of an idea of what the Photoshop Daily Creative Challenge is about, how you can get involved and all that good stuff. Um, if you pop over to behance.net uh, slash challenge slash Photoshop, you will see a nifty page that looks a little something like this. You'll know you're in the right place because you will see the July 26th to August uh, 20th up here at the top. And if you scroll down on this page, you will get a, uh, a challenge unlocked to you every weekday. Today is August 2nd for me, at least. I know some of you folks are living in the future, um, but today is August 2nd. Uh, we're going to be designing a promotional poster using shape, shadows, and negative space to tell a story, which I'm super pumped about. Um, if you don't see this proper date up here at the top, you may be in the future watching a past broadcast but never fear because if you scroll down here to the bottom of the page you can find the July to August date range find all of the spiels about all of the challenges you can get the uh, starter files here and you can also click watch video to see all of the broadcasts for that challenge set Anywho, uh, one last thing I want to jump into before we start doing uh, the challenge is I would like to highlight that we have a Discord. You can find the Discord by going to bit.ly slash PS Discord and it looks a little something like this. Let me pop over here. Um, and this is a really great place to jump in, get a little bit of feedback about your work, um, talk to some of the mentors. Uh, I've been posting some helpful pro tips for developing case studies and things in there. Um, it is a really fabulous place um, just to kind of improve your skills, scrub up on some of those awesome Photoshop uh, things that you may have forgotten. Um, I am in the Discord server. Yes, yes, I, yes, I am. Um, in fact, you can come up here uh, to the pinned messages and see that I have left you folks a bunch of freebies of little things that I've done throughout the challenges thus far that you can use in your challenge entries. Um, I've been posting some tips and tricks about how to create some really nice case studies if you want to check them out. You can always tag me um, if you would like some help with your work. Um, so that is the Discord, that is the challenge page, and now we are going to dive into what we have planned for today. So this is our starter file. Design a promotional poster using shape, shadows, and negative space to tell a story. As I said, I've got some helpful links and things in here uh, to Adobe fonts, Adobe Color, and Adobe Stock if you would like to uh, grab some free resources to help you. But another thing that you can do is you can actually open up the Create Waves library. I'm going to let this load up a little bit right here. Um, let me come back here and go to Create Waves. The Create Waves library is a super awesome library of colors, images, textures, illustrations, um, all sorts of things, patterns that you can use to work on the Create Waves uh, contest entries, which is sort of, uh, you know, kind of goes along the lines with our DCC. Um, right now, all of the DCC challenges are kind of starter places, just in case you would like to enter into this art contest. And you can find out more about it if you go um, to the Create Waves article, which I will post into the chat. There you go. Uh, we can go. You can go to the Ocean Agency and learn more. Um, and you can also go to the CC Library page right there. Um, so all of those links are in the chat. And now we are going to dive in to what we're going to be working on today. So 
We're telling a story with negative space, shapes, and shadows today, um, and I am actually going to be creating a different size uh, for my challenge entry here. I usually make square starter files for you folks, but the thing is, I wanna make sure that it's a smaller file because we're all gonna be working on different computers. I have no idea of knowing how big a file you folks can handle. So if you'd like to change the shape or size um, or start a new file other than the starter file, feel free, you do not always have to use the starter file. I have a entry here, a thing developed here that is an 11 by 17 inch uh, piece that I think makes a pretty good wide angle poster. Um, and I've got a shape in here of the ocean butterfly fish. Uh, and the way that I got this shape is I went, uh, did some, some research and found a fish that I wanted to tell a story about and I created a shape from it. Uh, you can use the pen tool to do this by simply grabbing um, the pen tool um, and just coming through and tracing a fish. If you have an image of, fit, of a fish that you really like and then hit shape to create a shape. Um, you can also come in uh, with the brush tool if you would prefer to use the brush tool. So if I hit B on my keyboard, you can see that I can come in um, and kind of start I could trace a fish, I could start drawing my own fish, I could do whatever I want uh, just to get a nice silhouette of this. You could also go to Adobe Stock Free and find an isolated image of a fish um, and, and use that. You can turn it into a silhouette uh, by taking that image, hitting Control or Command U, um, and cranking that lightness down or up or however you want to to do it just to get a nice solid outline um, and this is how we are going to create um, a really cool kind of storytelling image with this fish um, it's going to be uh, heavily based on a lot of clipping masks and things and what we're going to do is simulate this cool idea that we could use photoshop to make a piece that almost seems like it's been cut out of construction paper yes indeed robert don't forget about the ocean agency.org. I should have posted a little link there to um, the Ocean Agency's post specifically about this um, contest for Create Waves. Um, if you did not see that, uh, possibly we could get Sam to snag um, that link as well. All right, so what I'm going to do uh, is I am going to change the color of my ocean butterfly fish right quick. And the way that I am going to do that is by coming in here, I'm just gonna double click this. I'm gonna come over here to color overlay. And I think that I'm going to select kind of a dark blue color. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go like this. Let me kind of crank this up into more blue territory. And I'm gonna grab something like that, okay. Uh, I'm gonna say I'm gonna turn this on to normal because I don't want to I don't want to put this on a blending mode because my image is black so if I try to put it on a blending mode you can't really there's not a lot of things that you can do where you can put the put a color over a blending mode on a blending mode over black and have it change the color and we just want this to be the solid color I chose so I'm gonna say okay now I have my blue fish um, and I may even actually reconvert this into a smart object just so that I have a solid layer um, that I can interact with um, with that color over the top of it instead of worrying about the layer style sort of changing anything I put under or over it so now I have my blue fish and on this layer that I have created up here I will right click it hit create clipping mask. Um, and now you can choose a lot of different uh, methods to do what I'm gonna do next. And I'm gonna show you a few of them before I will probably switch to a brush because I'm an illustrator, but feel free to use any of these techniques. First of all, you can grab your pen tool again. Um, but what we're gonna do is create kind of a blob shape in the center here, okay? We're gonna create kind of a blob shape. We're gonna go uh, around the edge of this fish sort of in a way that really um, kind of makes it unique. Let me grab something like that. Boom, there we go. Uh, and I am going to do a, let's do a selection. Okay, let's do a selection. I'm going to grab a selection tool so I can right click and say select inverse. Um, and then what I can do is grab my paint bucket, select this blue, and then grab a blue that is just slightly lighter um, and kind of put that in there, okay? So let's do control or command D to deselect and see what we've got there. We do have kind of a nice, a nice shape going on right there. Another way uh, that you can kind of get the same effect um, is simply by using the lasso tool in the first place. So um, it's 
instead of using the pen tool to create the shape, which the pen tool allows you to get kind of a smoother, um, a smoother selection if you want, but you could just take your lasso tool and kind of come in here and make a shape however you want. This might be a little more difficult to kind of get a nice, um, a nice smooth sort of, uh, sort of vibe here. Um, this is actually not so bad though. Let me see if I can, um, oops. I'm gonna go ahead and select inverse and paint bucket in there. Can I, can I, oh, I need to make a new layer. Control shift in or command shift in if you are on a Mac to make a new layer. Um, and then I might actually deselect with control D and control T to free transform and just kind of bump it over there. So I've kind of made a shape like that um, in there. And then another way that you can do it, which is what I will be using, is I'm gonna make a new layer here. I'm going to grab um, one of our basic brushes uh, here in Photoshop. I'm gonna grab this hard round pressure, I believe. I'm gonna make sure the smoothing is cranked up on that. Um, and I am also going to open my brush uh, settings here. Just make sure the set, the spacing is turned down because I don't want um, to have these like rings in my brush stroke. So I'm gonna push that spacing down. Uh, and then I'm going to come in and I'm just gonna start kind of Kind of create, oops, kind of creating a shape like that. Okay, um, and honestly, my my pen tool version might have been a little bit better. Maybe I will use the pen tool version. But you can see, you know, how I'm gonna start doing this. So uh, maybe I will actually use. Um, let me kind of. I'm gonna delete these, make a new layer, put that on a clipping mask, and I'm just gonna kind of go crazy here for a moment. Um, kind of adding all of this stuff. So I will, I'm gonna select this hard round or maybe this hard round pressure size. I will do the same thing, making sure the spacing is cranked all the way down on that um, and make sure that the smoothing is turned up pretty high because I really want this to be um, pretty darn uh, smooth. And I'm just gonna start kind of creating, let me make something that is a little more, there we go. Just kind of get a, a nice a nice fill in here for this interesting and strange shape, um, and I I might actually come in and free transform that and maybe kind of bring that out like so just to kind of do that. And then what I'm going to do is in between those is I'm going to make a new layer and I'm going to keep doing this. I'm going to keep increasing the size or increase, increasing the brightness of my brush as I go through all of these blue shades, and I'm going to start kind of creating this uh, this effect where there's more and more and more and more layers of blue sort of coming through here, okay? And I'll, I'll transform this one as well um, and kind of bump that up, maybe like this. I can come in with my eraser if I want to um, kind of erase and smooth some of this out, which I definitely do. Um, and I'm gonna try not to be too entirely precious with this. I really don't wanna to be too crazy with it. Um, and I'm just gonna make a few of these layers, okay? Select that color. Let's get something that is a little bit brighter and let's maybe come down like so. I'm gonna do another layer here, fill that in, something like that, okay? Maybe smooth that out a little bit right there. There we go. Let's do another one. Let's grab an even brighter color right here. Like so, okay. Fill that in. And we're just gonna keep doing that until we get all the way to the center. You can make them less organic if you want. If you would like to follow um, the shape of each, um, of each of the different lines and things for your actual fish, you may. Um, you do not have to make it as, as organic as I'm making mine. I think I'm gonna bump that up there like that. Um, you can do this however you want, okay? Uh, I'm gonna grab an even brighter color and we're just kinda kinda swirl that around like so, okay? There we are. I don't know if anybody's putting together what I'm doing here, but I'm pretty excited to deliver the punchline, as it were, to this piece. Um, and then let's maybe get one or two more. Let's grab an even brighter color here. Let's do something like this.
boom I like it I like it I like it okay and then one more we'll make another layer and we'll grab something like this and do something like that. All right, so we have this shape, we have this fish shape, right? Um, and yeah, it kind of looks like paper craft, right? And we're gonna make it look even more like paper craft. So we have this shape, we've got our fish, we've got all of these different sort of interesting um, shapes kind of in the center of it, and they're all stacked up on top of each other. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna start applying some layer styles to these to give it a little bit more texture. And this is how we will do that. So first of all, uh, I want to come to this ocean butterfly fish uh, image and I am going to double click it, double click my layer to open my layer styles panel and I'm going to uh, add an inner glow, okay? And you see what that did? You see how that added this nice soft shadow around the edges? It almost looks like now it went from being a shape to being kind of in 3D space, like I've cut that out of a piece of paper. Um, and I, I'm gonna leave the opacity on 30%. I have a tiny bit of noise on this to kind of give it a slight little bit of texture. Um, and I am going to leave the size at 125 and hit okay. I'm also going to press F to kind of enter my secondary Photoshop mode here, just so that I can drag this over um, and have my layer styles panel over here where I can see it well. Um, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna bring that over here. And then I'm gonna go um, down the list of all of these layers I've made, and I'm going to do the same thing, adding a little bit of drop shadow and noise texture. So I'll double click from up here. We will add uh, not an inner glow this time, but an outer glow, okay? So if I add an outer glow, you can see how um, these shapes here, they have kind of a negative space on the inside of them, whereas our fish shape had negative space on the outside of it. So we've kind of switched up how we actually apply that glow in order to affect it in the same direction. So we're doing an, a, an outer glow on this. So it added that nice glow right there. Um, and we're just gonna go down the line, uh, double clicking and adding that outer glow. Uh, and as you can see, as I start to go down here, um, it's really starting to add a layer of depth to this piece. Let's add another outer glow. Let's scroll down, double click, add another outer glow, okay. Uh, scroll down, add another outer glow. Um, and I think that that is perfect. Now you can come in and, and clean this up and make it a little crispier if you want to. Um, I am also, what I'm going to do while I work here is, you can see as I've added these effects in the layer styles panel, my layers have started to expand where I can see what layer styles I have applied and I can actually hide them. Um, I can hide all the effects at once or if I had applied multiple um, effects layers here, I could actually just hide them individually. And then I also have this nice little carrot menu here on the edge of my layer that allows me to to close these down to save space in my layers panel, which I love to do. Uh, so I have my fish and I have um, all of my layers. Now, how do we tell a story with this? So I chose the ocean, uh, the ocean butterfly fish because I, I really love coral reefs. And this is one of the many, 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 many fish um, that hangs out in the coral reef. And you know that we're not gonna get through this ocean challenge without some ocean facts. So I'm going to kind of start telling a story um, about coral reefs and things with this piece um, by kind of adding some little sketchy illustrations of things on each layer while I tell you about um, coral reefs. So the first layer I'm going to um, add to, it's gonna be this fish, the ocean butterfly fish uh, layer. And I am going to use my eraser. Um, you could use an eraser or, yeah, I think we're gonna use an eraser. And I know that's weird because we would have, we're gonna have to rasterize this. If you don't want to raster, honestly, actually, let's not rasterize, let's do a mask. Let's be smart about this. I'm gonna hit this mask button um, and I'm gonna come over here to my mask with my B, with my brush. Um, I'm gonna make sure I have black selected. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start adding some seaweed. Let me grab something that is a little, a little sharper. Let me maybe turn the smoothing down just slightly. I'm gonna start adding um, some little seaweed fronds, okay? Uh, now, coral reefs are really wonderful because they're not only bustling with life, not only are there thousands and thousands, maybe hundreds of thousands of maybe millions of different critters and creatures that like to come and hang out at the coral reef. But coral reefs are really awesome places because like us 
folks here at Adobe Live, all of those creatures that live in those coral reefs actually have an incredible um, amount of teamwork, a special kind of teamwork called symbiosis or symbiosis, however you would like to pronounce it. Um, and symbiosis means that there are fish who arguably should probably be enemies that live in a coral reef um, that actually work together, that hunt together, that, you know, there's there's sharks that I, I think many people feel are some of the, the scariest creatures in the ocean that will stop by a coral reef and suddenly a truce is called and all of the creatures that they might otherwise hunt for supper uh, will stop and come give them a bath, kind of clean barnacles off them and, and all sorts of things. It's really quite incredible. Um, and a lot of the things that we have today, different kinds of food, different kinds of beauty products and things like that actually come to us because of coral reefs. Because not only are coral reefs important in that they give us a lot of different uh, chemicals and things that we can use to make medicines, uh, stuff like that. There's actually a lot of different chemicals we have discovered in coral reefs that have helped us to fight cancer. Um, but coral reefs also create a natural stop block in the ocean that protects many of our beaches um, and, and parts of our civilization from massive tsunamis and waves that could be very destructive to our people. So. Um, Coral reefs are incredibly important. Um, if you have never done any research on coral reefs, I urge you to, 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 to maybe do that because they're fascinating, incredible places. Um, so I've added some little coral formations here. All right, now I can come up here to this other, this, this next, uh, this next layer um, and not using the mask. I'm not going to use the mask this time. The mask was just special for this, um, for this layer for a sunfish. I'm gonna come in here, make sure I sample the color of this. And with my brush tool, I'm gonna to come in uh, and I am going to um, kind of start adding some, some, some pieces kind of coming off here. And you know, I might also um, kind of add something, kind of come in and change this a little bit. Let me, I'm gonna double click that outer glow. That's a way that you can kind of come and reorganize it, okay? Double click that outer glow and I might actually turn the size of our, there we go, kind of turn the size of it down. Cause you see how when the size is very large on that drop shadow, I kind of lose some of my detail, but if I crank it down just a little bit, um, it still adds some nice texture, but it allows me to kind of see um, more clearly what we're doing. Um, and you can come in and start adding this. You can start adding silhouettes of other of other fish and kind of like set a scene um, and tell a little bit of a story um, with your piece here. Now I did kind of Martha Stewart-y folks because I started another one. Um, and this other one is not finished, but I wanted to kind of show you in these last couple minutes how to add the proverbial uh, cherry on top, okay, to, um, to adding to doing this piece. So this is one that I um, that I did earlier. You can see I kind of made, I, I've put uh, a lot more layers in here and I actually started from a lighter blue and went to a darker blue. So you can do that too if you want. Um, and I made a lot more layers in this one um, and didn't add as much noise. So it's just kind of another, um, another idea here. But what I have done is I'm gonna collapse all of these layers. I, I duplicated this group and uh, converted the duplicated group into a smart object so that I can apply a gradient map because look at this folks, this is so much fun. If I come up to image adjustments and gradient map, I can actually start changing this. That in and of itself right there looks really cool, but you can get a little crazier with this. You can double click these colors here and you can come in and create your own gradient maps um, or uh, just kind of go a little wild um, with some of the presets in here, but I could come in and add something like this which is really cool. If I wanted to, I could say, okay, I can flip that into a reverse if I want and kind of make this orange. Um, while you're doing this, you may find that like me here, you can see some of these little pieces that I have added have not turned completely to white. And why is that happening? Cause we do want it to blend in with our white background. That is simply, that simply means you need to come in and edit your gradient map. So if I double click on this, you can see that it is going to apply only these colors and the colors in between um, these colors that I've selected to my piece here. And if I don't have something that is 100% white, then it won't allow me to have a portion of the piece um, that is 100% white. So I clicked there to add myself another little marker um, and I'm going to change that to white so it knows that the brightest point of this piece needs to be 100% white. 
Okay, there we go. Uh, we could also come in, we can go to, that's one of the custom um, gradients that I have, but we could also come in um, and just go to, uh, let's see, like the pinks. Let's, let's, let's go to the, that's cool. It's really cool. You can see like just how much fun this can really be like to come in and start changing these. We can even grab some purple and, and things like this and kind of, ooh, that's actually pretty nice. Um, can edit that to white. Um, and yeah, so that is how I am starting to uh, kind of create a, an interesting story with my with my negative space, my shapes um, and shadows today. I can't wait to see what you folks do. I hope that you enjoyed this challenge and you thought it was nifty. I hope you learned a little bit of something about uh, coral reefs um, and how precious and important they are to this planet. I hope you will enter into the Create Waves contest and I hope to see you later on today um, when I am modding in the chat. So happy to designing folks. Thank you so much for joining me and I will see you later.